वन अगेन गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबाडी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम सो थैंकफुल टू यू ऑल फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी हियर एंड गिविंग मी दिस ऑपर्चुनिटी टू शेयर माय स्टोरी विद यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई थॉट आई मे हैव टू गिव अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट वेट इट्स अ प्रेयर ऑफ द होली या आई मे हैव टू गिव अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट मी आई ऑलवेज बिलीव मे बी आई कुड रियलाइज इट through my life my vocation and this is a real call for me too that is from the book of jeremiah 15 before i formed you in the womb i knew you and before you were born i consecrated you i appointed you a prophet to the nations once we complete my story you will realize this is a reality that happened with my life that's why i firmly believe these words are given in the bible just indicating my life okay so now let me start with myself i was born on uh, into a traditional orthodox marthoma suriani nasrani i'll tell you what it is or saint thomas christians we are normally called it's a saint thomas christians we are normally known as or it's a pure name is malthoma suriani nasrani and uh, we are four children for our parents three boys and a girl and i am the youngest i have two elder brothers and one elder sister and i am the youngest all three of them are there in india who is malthoma suriani nasrani the saint thomas christians also called the suryan christians of india Malthoma Suriani Nasrani or Malangara Nasrani or Nasrani Mapla are the ethno religious community of Indian Christians in the state of Kerala that is called the Malabar region who for the most part employ the eastern and western liturgical rites of Syriac Christianity they trace their origins to the evangelistic activity of Saint Thomas the Apostle in the 1st century that is on specifically AD 52 the saint thomas the apostle one of the apostles of jesus reached to kerala india and reached to specifically to kerala and he started converting people and that is a trace back to the christianity where we come from and they are known as the marthoma suriani nasranis and the church is called saint or it's a zero malabar church here malabar means the kerala region another name is called malabar Sira Malabar means Syriac tradition with the Malabar region. So that is called the Sira Malabar. Now I'll tell you what is Malabar Christian here. See the Catholic Church consists of 24 churches. I hope you know about it, right? Yeah, Catholic Church consists of 23 sui iuris eastern churches plus Latin church. So that is a Catholic Church. Catholic Church means 20 fold churches are there it's a union of 20 fold churches and there are 23 eastern churches and one latin church and the the bishop of rome is the head of the latin church and he will be the pope basically speaking i cannot become a pope okay <laughs> because i cannot become because i belong to syro malabar right I can only become a major archbishop or up to a cardinal. I cannot be a pope because I don't originally basically belong to a Latin rite. I belong to an Eastern rite. So, I am not qualified to become a pope at any cost. Syro Malabar Catholic Church is one of the 23 Eastern Sui Iuris churches means individual and it has got full freedom. It's a union, part of the union. all these 24 the heads of all these 24 churches are equal and pope is first among the equals because the latin church is the biggest church in the catholic church entire world all other churches are typically in only few areas and latin church is the only church spread throughout the world and the biggest church therefore the head of the latin church is pope there is no doubt in that that is why the bishop of rome the head of the latin church is the pope no other heads of the churches can become a pope only a bishop from the latin church can become a pope 
I hope you got what is Surah Malabar Church now by this time. Got a simple, small idea. <laughs> so there are 24 churches. We belong to one of the Eastern churches. If you ask me what is the difference, the tradition and the liturgy. Being a Catholic priest, actually I was, I, I got all throughout my formation from Jesuits. We have got formation together, everything is together. Only thing, the liturgy that we celebrate, the mass we celebrate is different. We face to the east and celebrate the mass. Here we face in Latin rite, we face the people and celebrate the mass. Then the prayers are different, just like the Eucharistic prayers. It is quite detailed or it may take normally. On Sunday masses in the Eastern liturgy, it takes one hour, 20 minutes, usual. And a lot of singings. And uh, it has got the participation of the public also is very important. It's almost like 50-50. Uh, because the priest need to say the prayer, the public need to respond to it. You need to be active. Only during the homily you get a little time to sleep. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to be <laughs> Otherwise, you have to be very active. Okay? Because a lot of chantings and a lot of singings are there. So that's the difference in the liturgy. And almost all the Eastern liturgies are there. Even in the liturgical, we have got the four schools. Alexandrian, Latin, Latin school, uh, yeah, Roman school, Lat, uh, Alexandrian school, Byzantine school, and uh, Syriac school. So this comes from this liturgy. I'm not going to into detail. That's very boring. Leave it. <laughs> so now let me come to my life. Actually, many times I use, even I'm, I'm writing a biography of myself. And uh, I was planning, I was discussing with some of my friends. If possible, we will make a movie. Because my life is quite wonderful. I really feel I'm so privileged that I'm something special. I really believe. See, my mother conceived me when she was 34. And I am the fourth child at my home. Already I have two brothers. My eldest brother is almost uh, 14 years elder to me. Then my sister... She is almost 12 years older to me. And my just elder brother, who is 8 years older to me. It's almost, I can find, 14, 12, 8. And I am the youngest. And when she was 34, she conceived me. But there was a big issue. However, the doctors diagnosed her with a heart problem. And asked her to abort the child to save the life of the mother. Because immediately she had some issues. She was taken to hospital. There they realized she really was one of the heart valves were totally failed. And the doctors advised her, better you abort the child and save your life. And I'm really grateful to my parents. My dad, who is 84 now, is very healthy at home. And my mom whom I lost a few years before, they decided to take a great risk. I used to just imagine when she was taken into labor room, what all things would have been going through her mind. The doctor said no possibility of survival for my mother. At the time of birth delivery, due to the pain, she is not going to survive. And they were ready to take the risk. My dad and my mom said, no, we want this child. And I was born, nothing happened to her. Nothing happened to her. And that's what even I feel a miracle. I used to imagine what all things might have been going through the mind of my mom when she was taken into the delivery ro the labor room. She might have been saying goodbye to all for the last time because the doctors assured she is going to die. And what would have been the condition of my dad? Going to miss my life partner forever. And I still <coughs> think about those moments. I imagined, my God, what would have been their emotional conditions? And luckily, nothing was happened to her. My mother and father decided to take a risk and she was ready and prepared to leave the world during my birth. But to the surprise of all, 
nothing happened to her and she continued her medication of course during the pregnancy she did not take any medicine because she prepared to leave this world and once she was okay she realized the child is born then she started taking the medicine and the medication continued as i was born the youngest i had a happy childhood and most of the time my sister who was elder to me for 12 years was like my mother because my mother was not so well so my sister who is almost 60 now not 60 she is 57 or 58 now she was like my mother and you don't believe she was married when i was studying in 5th standard and that was one of the shocking things in my life i was so angry with my brother in law because he took away my mom almost i felt so i was with always with my sister and i was so angry at that man because i could not digest my sister is not there with me anyhow that was a good time and i had a happy childhood both my brothers and my sister they took care of me very well they treated me like a doll i feel because still i have got good memory how they all three of them used to make me sleep and when they go to college because they are very elder i am very small they used to bring toffee every day they used to bring toffee and give me i am very small at home so by evening i am eagerly waiting for these three to come back and i had a good childhood and of course then i i was taken i uh, sent to the school i was good in my studies and regular for holy mass since the age of 4 my mother was very particular with that because the church was maybe half a mile away from my home my mother was very particular that we should go to church in the morning whatever it may be i still remember it may be raining like anything it may be lot of homework to do nothing doing she wakes us up at 5:30 go to church at 6:15 6:30 we have morning prayer 6:45 we have mass we'll get over by 7:30 and since i remember from the age of 4 whether we like or not we were forced to go for mass no way to escape and of course i used to accompany my brothers and there after every day then i started becoming an altar server and that was a motivation for me because i love to do that and later my mother was very devotional lady she made sure that we children went to mass every day irrespective of climate homework etc my elder brother who is a math teacher was guiding me in my studies my brother one was just elder to me he is a, a expert in mathematics and he is a mathematics teacher so he was always giving me guidance and he was giving me almost like a tuition every day i need to spend one hour with him so he used to guide me in maths and science so i was good in studies and of course i performed well in studies sports elocution acting and debate because he used to give me all these type of uh, uh, guidances i used to participate in all the speech competition elocution competitions for the acting mono acting then i was good in debate and he made he used to make uh, he made me to read a lot of books and that helped me to become a very good very active and i was so good in studies good in sports good in everything i was almost like uh, an apple of the eye of the teachers <coughs> i represented my school in different district and regional level competitions so i was good in everything so i used to perform all these things my brother was preparing me to become an engineer it was the dream of my brother he wanted me to become an engineer the first engineer from the family i'm good in studies he decided okay you can crack this competitions you can become a good engineer and he was giving me guidance mainly in mathematics and physics because that is what required to become a good engineer i said okay well we are doing good and but my life turned around when a teacher mishandled me when i was in grade 7 i was studying in grade 7 
even today i do not know why that teacher punished me on that day i was so good student i was good in studies i never missed my homework i never did any mischief in the school i always performed good in sports i was always participating for all the competitions i was good in literary activities i was good in everything but still i do not know that teacher punished me that was not a simple punishment she brought me to the assembly and punished me in the morning assembly i was totally insulted really i felt like dying even i thought about i'm frankly speaking to you even i thought about suicide because i cannot go back i am such a good child i am everybody is adoring even the neighbors used to say we if we should we should have a person like jimmy at home and when this teacher punished me i felt the entire world is turning around and nothing i understand nothing and i think the severe most part happened to my life was that we always had a good group of people come together to the school and that group rejected me they pointed me saying he is a bad boy the group rejected me i was totally alone the word they used he is a bad boy cannot be in our group really it was a great insult and i couldn't do anything i was totally helpless and for a few days i was alone i felt nobody is there in this world because my i lost already my sister is married and she is gone she is no more there at my home and nobody is there to understand me and when i was there alone for a few days there came another group of this big buddies they are the seniors they do all the notorious things in the school they welcomed me they said jimmy come we are there with you and they were the backbenchers in the school they were the problematic guys in the school they told me jimmy come we are there with you and so happily i joined them so happily i joined in their company and slowly i became their leader you know why i was good in studies i got enough intellect and these people they don't have that much intellect but they do everything else and when i joined them i have a good intellect i now got the courage to do be a part of this group and slowly i became the leader of that group by this time i had a big gang with me almost we were 15 to 20 people ready to do anything i'm studying in 7th grade now what happened i reached and my parents changed to my school when i reached at 8th grade they were tired of me for the problems i used to create i almost became like a public nuisance they were so tired of me the entire area people used to they really tired of me because i really became a problem maker there and i became the gang leader somehow they wanted my parents wanted me to or take me out of this gang so they decided to send me to a school that is nearly 12 miles away from my home there are so many schools nearby my house but my parents decided this guy should be taken out of this group this gang and they sent me to another school and it was a sports school i was so happy because nobody is going to know what i am doing there and there also i could become another gang leader i formed another gang of 15 to 20 people in my group were ready to do anything nobody used to question us we used to challenge everybody there lot of fights in the school you understand the group fights we were almost considered to be even one thing my teachers were so good to me in the new school they treated me so well the only reason we never used to lie if i have beat somebody if the teacher calls and asks did you do it we never lie if i did it i say yes i did it if our group did it 
we say yeah it is our group day date so the teachers were so happy because we never used to lie and grade 8th grade 9th by grade 10th this again this group became such a big nuisance only thing the teachers were happy that we were truthful and we were sincere whatever we you do we do sincerely there is no doubt in that even we go to beat somebody we are so sincere we do it that's all if we decided to do we do it that's all there is no doubt in that and when i reached it to grade 10th even everybody was scared or we can say we were uh, irritated by seeing us because we are treated like almost like a gangsters because always move around with the gang we have a good gang of 15 20 at least 5 to 6 people are with me always nothing good in i lost my studies only i used to maintain an average from the topper i became an average student because and their concentration is gone and though i used to go to church i go from home but i never get in the church because i don't like the priest is giving lot of advice i don't like so it used to challenge the parish priest and all of them were fed up and somehow even i do not know i was about to give grade 10th exam some pressures came to my mind and i decide i some some of a thought comes to my mind i want to come out of this group i don't know why and how it came i do not know even today i am in a good terms with good communication with all my people i'm frank to you they are all good that time it was childhood everything is over now they are also doing their own businesses but even today they used to we used to discuss and laugh a lot about that happened and all of a sudden i don't know i feel no i need to come out of this what happened was that somehow then only heard on sunday the parish priest is announcing there is a vacation uh, is a vacation camp those who are interested to join priesthood can go for a camp i thought let me go i was not able to convey this message to my parents i know they will laugh at me so somehow i went to my parish priest and i told my parish priest father and i did not go during day time just like nicodemus went to jesus i went on the previous evening i know others will laugh at me if i say that i am going to join seminary and i went to the pastor and i said father i want to go for the vacation camp and i am interested to join the seminary and immediately what happened can see here immediately the reply of my pastor was priesthood is not meant for people like you get out my pastor told me the priesthood is not meant for people like you get out i was so sad really i was so sad because first time somebody is denying me something i just asked for a consent letter so immediately i thought about we had an inchild of altar service one sister franciscan clarist sister we went to the convent and i told the sister sister i want to go for a vocation camp she asked me are you really asking for it i said yes sister i'm really asking i want to go she said let me speak to the priest she came along with me to the pastor and she said she pleaded i because in front of me it happened she pleaded like anything and at the end she assured the pastor and she took up the entire responsibility she said if he misbehaves or if he does anything i will be responsible father based on that assurance around 8:30 next day early morning we have to go for the camp around 8:30 night the pastor gave me a consent letter and of course next day morning i joined the vocation camp held at the diocesan seminary of course we were 150 people and they take 24 people 
150 people came for a vocation camp. They select only 24 people. And I just participated. I never expected because my background is such a bad. I know my pastor will never recommend me, I'm sure about. So I lost my hope. I came back. But I did not tell at my home that I had attended a vocation camp. Instead, I told I'm going for a camp. There are a lot of camps for the children. It takes places. I did not say. After two, three weeks, two priests are visiting my home. I was somewhere out. When I came back, two priests are sitting at my home. I looked at, hey, I'm quite familiar with these guys. I was just thinking, who is this? Then as I reached, they welcomed me. Oh, Jimmy, where were you? I said, I had just gone to the market because we used to spend time there in the uh, market. Then we have got our own club. Like We used to come together there. I was there. And all my entire family was looking at me as if, what's happening with this guy? My dad was just looking at me. What happened to this? Mad or what? I don't know because they never expected. And they said, oh, you had to come for the vocation gamble. We have decided to select you. Then my dad was almost getting a heart attack. <laughs> How it's going to happen? And all were looking at me. And the priest left. My elder brother called me. The eldest one called me and said, decide seriously. If you do anything there and don't spoil the name of the family there. If you have got no plan, better don't go. But if you go there, be sincere, do well. I told him, yes, I will do my best. Then of course, I joined the seminary there. And of course, the initial, we had a three, four years of a training that I had it from uh, uh, 1993. I joined the St. Lawrence Minor Seminary in Agra. That is the northern part of India, though I am from Kerala. I just joined the seminary because I want to come out of this group. I never wanted to have any contact with them anymore. And 1996, I was sent to Ruhalaya Major Seminary for my philosophical studies. And of course, in 2000, I was sent to Papal Seminary, Pune, for my theological studies under the guidance of Indian Jesuits. Actually, I hope, I don't know whether you are sure, uh, have you heard about the Papal Seminary? So, Papal Seminary means almost every country has got one Papal Seminary. It is directly under the control of the Pope. No bishops are the in charge. The Pope from Rome directly control everything there. So the Indian Papal Seminary is handed over to Jesuits. So Jesuits are taking care and it is directly under the guidance of uh, uh, the, all the 20, 24 uh, liturgical uh, so rites, the people, the churches are, can come for formation there. It is not meant for anybody. It is meant for all the 24 churches. So we study with the people from different rites. So that is, I studied in Papal Seminary. I was lucky to be part of this Indian Jesuits. And I lost my mother during my second year theology on May 11, 2001, at the age of 50, 57. One thing I was sad, she could not see that I became a priest. In my second year theology, I lost to her. Of course, by the time, she had suffered a lot. I think she had been to ICU five or six times. And of course, I'm thankful to God I was supposed to be an orphan too, without a mother, but God gave me her up to my age of 23. As a child, as a teenager, I got all the care from my mother. And I'm so grateful to God, she was there up to my age, up to, me, uh, up to 23. And that was a great support for me. And in 2002, another change happened to my life was, I did Ignatian retreat. You know what is Ignatian retreat? It's a 30 days of retreat. Seven days into four. So 28 plus three breaks. So 31 days of retreat. And Father Altreacher, a Jesuit priest, he guided me for this Ignatian retreat. And the outcome of that Ignatian retreat was so touching to my life. And even that retreat changed my life. And he told me, after my retreat of 30 days, 31 days, he gave me one nice suggestion. Jimmy, you have a charming personality. Use it for Christ. 
this Ignatian retreat made me to realize Father Altreacher, I remember him always gratefully and gave me, because in the Ignatian retreat we have personal meetings, no common talks. It's a personal meetings and 31 days he just gave me the realization, you have a charming personality, use it for Christ. I think that was the main source of energy for my priestly life. Yes, God gave me everything. And that charming personality, what he gave me, use it for Christ. And thereafter, my life changed. I saw, I'm so happy because God gave me such a wonderful thing. And I'm happy to share it. And of course, I was ordained a priest on December 31st, 2003. I am almost in 19 year uh, in priesthood. This is my 20th year of priesthood. 2003, by his grace, Mal Joseph Perindottam for the Archdiocese of Changanacheri in Kerala. My bishop wanted me to be in the North Indian mission of the diocese, that is Itawa mission, and he sent me to the school there. Actually, this uh, Changanacheri, we are having a North Indian mission in the UP. Well, the literacy, uh, the literacy percentage is, uh, I think, 25 or 30. It's very literate the poor people. There we have mission and we are having almost uh, 15 uh, schools up to 12th grade and we are teaching nearly 30,000 students in our schools. Yeah, so in all over India, the Catholic Church, we are having 14,600 plus schools in India. The Catholic Church is having. Actually, I say exactly in 2005, I was asked to complete my professional studies, Bachelor of Education to qualify as a principal, and I was sent to St. Xavier's College, Kolkata. While I was doing my studies today uh, in St. Xavier's College, Kolkata, I was a chaplain at uh, Mother House, Kolkata, where Mother Teresa of Kolkata, she used to live and her tomb is still there. So I was there almost one and a half years. I was celebrating Mass every day there. And while I was doing my studies in St. Xavier's College, Kolkata, and I was really, that time Sister Nirmala was their main uh, general. And uh, it was just a time of, uh, that time she was not declared as a saint, I hope. So all those canonization process were on. So that time I was there in Kolkata. Then of course, this is about my priestly life, a simple profile I have made it. Uh, Catholic priest ordained on 31st December 2003 for the Archdiocese of Changanasheri and served in its North Indian mission, it our mission for 18 years as a dynamic educationist and an influential pastor elected as the Vice President of All India Catholic Schools Association New Delhi and Global, Global Trotter primarily concentrates to be an inspirational leader, a good friend and a motivational and promoter of the Catholic faith ready to serve and available for the spiritual needs of the people. Because I was mainly in the schools I was the principal for almost uh, 15 years in the school, different schools I served and these are some of my education qualifications I don't mind. Uh, and I was elected as the vice president that we have 14,600 plus Catholic schools, we have a union and I was its All India vice president for 5 years from 2017 to 2022. That's why I said exactly we had all these things. And of course, and I used to visit the different countries. I have completed visiting 25 countries. And I had been to US previously. In 2019, I came to the UN Hall for a, a World Education Congress and I represented India here. And uh, I had a few paper presentations or discussions there we had, all those things. That's not a big serious matter. Then this is my priestly life. Recently, I'm here in Holy Family, Sura Malabar Catholic Church of Oklahoma City since September 1st, 2023. And of course, I'm also serving as the chaplain at the St. Anthony's as well as the Mercy Hospital. Monday, Tuesday, I go to St. Anthony's. Wednesday and Friday, I go to Mercy Hospital. Saturday, Sunday, I spend my time in the parish here, Holy Family, Sura Malabar Catholic Church at the Southwest 29th Street. Before that, I was in the St. Thomas Sura Malabar Catholic Church of San Francisco from December 1, 2022, August 1st. And previously, I was a pastor at the St. Peter and Paul Mission at in North India and the principal of St. Peter's Senior Secondary School. 
and before that I was a pastor and the principal. Then again before that is St. Anthony's mission, principal, St. Anthony's and all those about my life. So these are some of the things I did in my life. And my mission statement. Speak Lord for your servant is listening. First Samuel 3, 9. And of course, yes, I am a servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me according to your word. Luke 138. And ready to serve and available for the needy. I think that's my mission statement. So thank you very much. Yes, sir. How old were you when your mother died? Uh, 23. 23. 23. 23. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have got nearly 45 families from Kerala. We have actually the liturgy that we have, alternative Sundays we have in English and in Malayalam. Yeah, both in Malayalam and in English we have alternative Sundays. Last Sunday we had it in Malayalam. Next Sunday we will have it in English. Are we welcome to your church? Sure, most welcome. If you can tell me in advance, I can have it on that day with the Malayalam full songs. Normally, it's, it takes one hour. You expect around one hour, 30 minutes. We begin at 9.30. See, 9 o'clock, we have silent adoration. 9.30 to 11 o'clock, you can expect the Mass. The homily will be in English on every Sunday. Where is the, where is the church located? It's located at Old Immaculate Concept, uh, Conception Church. The Archdiocese gave that church to us. Immaculate Conception Church at the 29th Street. 29th, 29th Street. I, I, I'm not so familiar with that place. I used to go there. I keep the Google map and reach there. <laughs> I live in Catholic Pastoral Center, CBC. I'm very close to the Archbishop. <laughs> He's just the next. So, Father, can you, can you make a little distance between the Catholic Church and the Latin Church? No. No, no I, uh, what do you mean? I did not understand you. What do you ask? So, because you said you're from the Muslim Sierra Malabar, right? I can become a priest in this diocese, no problem. No, no, no. The right in which you are born, that is your right. Yeah. I cannot. Even if I become a priest in the Oklahoma City Diocese, I can. See, I have got the faculty of celebrating Mass. But I cannot become because I am basically born into another right. That's a canonical provision out there. See, actually mine is a small village like, and it's a full of Catholics. Catholics and Hindus, these two types of people live, and mine is a place well known for uh, the Catholicism, or we can say the Catholic population is uh, nearly 70 percentage, 70 zero. And very orthodox families, you will find uh, all types of Christians there, in the uh, Oriental or in the Eastern churches, the Latin church, the Malangara Rite and uh, Orthodox churches, a lot of churches you will find, almost like Oklahoma City. Right, most, most of us here in this room have never had the opportunity to travel to the Indian subcontinent. It's pretty village like. Uh, we have, can you please describe what village life was for you yeah. when you were growing up? Yeah. And Okay, I can say, see actually my village, basically my parent, my, fa my father, he's a farmer. We have got farmhouses. The main cultivation we have is rubber and the rice. Rubber, mainly we have got rubber and almost all things we cultivate. And that is the main source of income there. And we have got a lot of spices. Like almost the spices are grown in the field. 
we have got like uh, the long and uh, cardamom everything that's there we have got different estates like coffee beans so almost like that's a typical kerala life and we have got and that's uh, and the people all it's a, a literacy or literacy rate of kerala is 100 percentage yeah because uh, and actually it's because of uh, the christian population we should acknowledge the missionaries came to kerala the the presence of the catholic church because the first schools were made in india in the, in the first college even was the of india is in kerala by the missionaries there is no doubt and since this christianity was there we had an old christianity not like that of uh, here because each sect has got its own christianity we have got our own traditions and when these missionaries came they came in the 1400 or in the 14th century then this latin christianity was mixed up with our christianity few of us joined this latin christianity they are called the catholics today and still there are people who has not joined and continuing their tradition and almost the village life is there it's a uh, kerala is one of the smallest state of india the smallest because it's a uh, lengthwise maybe nearly 450 miles and widthwise maybe the minimum is 14 kilometers 10 miles and maximum can be some uh, you can expect around 60 to 80 miles that's only kerala it's a small place but the majority of the population are christians due to saint thomas the apostle and that tradition continued we had a the very old churches churches maybe 200 300 500 800 years old churches are still there even there are churches uh, made by uh, saint thomas and he died there itself he was died in a uh, uh, madras chennai and he became a martyr there and the life with the difference what i find only in food habits otherwise oklahoma is almost like my home because first of all very orthodox families very frank very orthodox families no traditional families faith you go to church every day even hindus every day morning they go to temple we go to church and that is very traditional families you will find and here and the beauty is that it is already we are getting all the things like literacy is there even the health standard is so high or almost like that of equal to the us we can find that's only place in india you will find the health standard and you will find the maximum number of nurses from india that's from kerala not india i should say i should say the from kerala and the vocation i have we can just check it in the net all together there are four lakhs plus uh, uh, priest in the world out of that you will find nearly 19000 priests are from india out of four lakhs 19000 are coming from this small part of india and in my diocese let me tell you my diocese we are 561 priests <laughs> <laughs> have you had a chance to uh, ask yourself, if you have lived in San Francisco and now in Oklahoma, uh, why Kerala has so many priests and why America is struggling to find enough priests? Two things I can tell you. Okay? First thing, the number of children have reduced. Even Kerala is going to this condition maybe after 10 15 years. We were four. My elder brother is having two children. The just elder to me, he is having two children. My sister is having four children. Now almost half of the population is cut down. Now that is one thing. Second thing, the real faith formation happening at home is no more happening because of the freedom. We are not sending them for the freedom with the responsibility. See, when we were in the school, my dad used to make us to do all the works at home. You go and play, you enjoy your time, no problem. Spend equal time helping at home. Maybe for the cultivation. Because we had a rice field, 
and we are supposed to help him once we have come back from the school and we have got rubber plantations and we have got rubber sheets we make and we need to put it for uh, drying it and it has got so bad smell once we come back from the school in the evening it is our duty if on monday if i do helping taking out all these sheets and uh, spreading it over there tuesday it is my brother's duty wednesday it is my elder brother's du- eldest brother's duty again on thursday it is my duty we are supposed to do this and that helped us and second thing the family prayer they were so strict my mother was so strict with the family prayer evening rosary i think these things that helped me to form myself i hope i'm clear to you yeah so so thank you very much